Okay, we have a Nikon Coolpix P520 with a defective lens. Disassembling this camera is pretty straightforward, but there are two different sizes of screw on the outside. And there are quite a few actually, so I would definitely recommend laying them out in a pattern. So we got two on this side. It's something that I always forget to do before I start is always pop the battery out. There is no screw under the battery cover on this particular camera. You do have to take all four screws out of the tripod mount. Not because it's actually connected to anything, but because it would be in the way of lifting out the lens. So, you have to take them out anyway, so might as well take them out now. So if you notice this screw right here that's offset, it's one of the longer ones. All the rest around the outside edge are the shorter length. There are three up this side of the camera. One is hidden beneath the HDMI and AV out cover. So that's the one that's a different size. Then flip open this and you'll see there are two more screws under here. These are also the longer size. All right, that's all the screws. The next thing we do, we would pop the flash up. Then you take a budger or in my case right now a slot screwdriver tip stick it underneath there's a little notch here just twist and that will push it out and then we get a little bit of a gap up here and from that you're able to just slide the whole back of the camera off then we have two ribbons one is a pretty standard clip the other one lifts out from both sides. And there we have the back off. So now we have a shield in the back, actually two shields, that need to be removed. The larger of the two shields has one screw that's hidden behind this. You just kind of lift that up a little bit and then you can get at this screw. And as always, I'm setting these in a pattern so that I know where they came off so I can put them right back. So eight screws, and you can see this just literally fell off. Then we've got this small bracket on the side that has one screw in it. Up at the top. So 
So we take that loose. I'll set it screw by it. And now we have the lens. Uh, we need to remove two clips here. One is the more standard kind. The other is more like something you would see in an Apple device. So we just flip this up on the back of the standard kind and then just pull it out. As you can see, this just uh, caught on the magnet in my screwdriver. It's just setting in there. So you lift it out. As I mentioned earlier, you have to remove it in order to lift the lens out anyway. And that is basically it. We tip it back. The whole lens will come out. You can see we've got just a shell of a camera there. And if you're replacing the lens as a whole, this is all you need to do. If you've got an internal lens error you're trying to resolve, this is where we will go from there. So, unfortunately, that is what I have to deal with today. So, we're going to start by removing the image sensor, which has three screws in the back of it. And then it just lifts off. Of course, you do not want to get any smudges, fingerprints, uh, dust, etc. We've got two things here. We've got the RF filter and a little square piece of plastic or something like that that has the rectangular shape we're so familiar with for uh, pictures cut into it. These just set aside um, when we're putting them back in. The square filter goes in first, then the IR filter. It has, it's just flat glass on one side, and it has like a rubber flange on the other. The rubber flange goes up facing toward the image sensor. So now we're down to just the lens. The lens and shutter are all in this assembly. This ribbon right here is what controls the shutter. This ribbon right here is what controls the autofocus motor. And off the top of my head, I'm not sure what that one controls. I'm going to have to wait till we get her open to find out. We've got two screws here to take off the autofocus motor. And that just lifts straight up. However, unfortunately, because of the ribbons, it's still attached, so we have to be kind of gentle with it now. Then we have a little clip here for the shutter, and we have a clip over here and this clip is a little bit strange because they kind of tied this around itself stuck together with adhesive so you need to be a little gentle pulling them off so you don't tear the ribbon but they will come off okay so this tail and this tail right here both stick through this back frame then we have to peel this back again be gentle it's adhesive and you don't want to tear the ribbons but there's a screw underneath this ribbon that needs to come loose And then there are two more up here that were already visible. And my autofocus motor is trying to get in on the act. Okay, so with those three screws out, we can lift this off. Those two ribbons will pull back inside and now we have the lens without this ring. So we'll just set this ring over here. All right, now we have, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. If you pull this out, it will come completely loose. Now it's important to notice 
that there are studs around the outside of this, six of them, and there are notches in the outside of this. We basically, it, it's helpful if you pay attention to which one was which, but if you don't, you're going to wind up with a problem like this, where it doesn't go down all the way. And we have this. Now you'll notice there's one spot on this where there's a sticker you can peel up. Peel up that sticker, twist the inner part of the lens, and at some point in there, right there, there will be a little silver peg that you can see. You have to pull that peg out. It's just a very small peg with a little flange on it. And it's right about at this point that I go, oh man, I've got so many screws, what am I going to do? Typically, I can figure it out. I have had a few times that were kind of hair raising. At any rate, once you pull this peg out, you can twist this all the way. Um, I guess it depends on which way you're looking at, whether that's clockwise or counterclockwise, but twist it all the way, and then it comes straight out. Now, it is important to notice there are three pegs, I believe. Yeah, there are three pegs in this internal lens carriage. There's one there, one there, and the one we removed right there. The reason you have to remove it is because two of the pegs have a path that leads them all the way out the front. One of them does not. It just stops. And that's why you can't just pull the lens apart. You have to take that peg out first. So we'll set this part aside. Now we are down to the nitty gritty of it. This is the part that is fairly difficult and irritating to try to repair. This motor right here is what adjusts one of the lenses inside. I just need to take two screws out of it. It looks like I was actually wrong. The, uh, the ribbon that I said was the shutter is actually the one for this motor. The larger of the two is the one for the shutter. Okay. So once you take that out, you slide it. This will come completely out. You have to be careful. There's a very small spring right there. It's easy to make it go flying and not super easy to get it back in. Okay. So now we have our shutter mechanism along with a lens and it looks like there's my problem. Things are wiggling around that shouldn't be. So I have to see if I need parts or if I need to just put things back together. But that right there is the more or less complete teardown. Um, of course, I didn't get into the circuit board or anything like that. That wasn't, uh, thankfully, not what was wrong with this particular camera. But uh, if you have questions, feel free to drop them. I don't work on this model very often, so I can't promise I'll be able to answer questions on other topics of this camera. But uh, if you have a question on disassembling the lens or something like that, I will see what I can do. Thanks, and uh, good luck with your project.